Hi, I'm Mark Cluggan. Welcome to the Photographer Academy. And today we're talking the essential elements of a headshot studio. So the first thing, obviously, you're going to be deciding upon is your lighting quality. And I absolutely agree with you on that. I would definitely go for a kind of a soft box that is big enough to actually light from the kind of the torso uh, right above, above the head. So something around about a metre tall as a kind of a guide. Much bigger than that, it's really for three-quarter photography, uh, full-length photography and so on with it. So you definitely want something about a metre kind of high and if possible about a metre wide uh, kind of thing as well with it. Um, the double soft softness absolutely essential, so two layers of diffu a diffusion or at least one layer diffusion if your light is inverted so it's bouncing back into the box or an umbrella before it comes back out. Then I would definitely opt for some form of uh, soft boxes, preferably strips into the background and these would be with egg crates on as well so it'll control the spillage of the light. And if I was you, if at all are possible, go for one in each corner of your room rather than basically just having one in position you've got to move from side, side to side. But if budget is again against you, do not be afraid to basically um, have to use the, the, the one light to move it from one side to the side as well. As far as um, reflectors are concerned, if you can, opt for the likes of a multi-panel reflector, whether it's a bought one like this is, this is a triflector, or you're kind of using the likes of polystyrene pieces on kind of movable spikes. You, you can actually buy a double spike on an arm that will allow it to actually move and so on. But this has become almost pretty much the industry standard for headshot photographers. And whatever you do, make sure that you've got one with a reflective surface, sur surface and if possible, one with a duller one. So like a white or a white silver and so on with it. Um, you don't really need two reflective surfaces as such. If you're photographing a lot of black skin, uh, the, the gold is fantastic because it adds a warmth to the blackness of the skin. Uh, whereas if you're using gold on white skin, it can take uh, a little bit of a jaundiced look at times and things really. So wherever you are in the world, obviously you kind of the, you suit your uh, majority of types of clientele kind of coming through the door and things. And obviously the benefit of this, it kind of can move the panels either in, in shot, out of shot, so you can either use the one or, mul or multiples with them. Um, I would definitely invest into um, some little wheels to go onto the bottom of your stands. This allows it to basically be moved around, even if it's, you know, two or three feet around set. It allows you to kind of move, uh, move it without dragging it, especially if you find that you need to add a, um, a weight, a sandbag to your light. Uh, if your softbox is heavy or whatever it would be, then having some wheels on it would allow it to actually move, move around. You're not going to do your back in injustice as well. So an essential element is getting tethered. Um, so you can go straight into your laptop or your computer near you. And so by the end of the one section of the shoot, you're able to quickly go through and edit with the client where they can choose their favorite images and so on with it. So this is a tether tool. You can usually pretty much tell it, tell it it's a tether tool because it's an orange cable, yeah? Um, try and get your jerk stopper on it as well. This stops the actual cable, uh, the cable from naturally being pulled out of the camera. So just that little jerk stopper uh, will take the tension off it and things really. I mean, obviously, after years and years and years and years of wear and, shoot and shooting so, so much, there's naturally going to be wear into the USB port or whatever it is. Um, however, what you want to do is minimize that actually damage over the time. Uh, you'll often see me, again, use the likes of the trigger on the top. This is the Skyport trigger, um, specifically for Elinchrom. It means that I can control which lights to fire or all lights to fire from here. There's a little bit more of an advanced one as well, so uh, one that I can control even more fun functionality of light from the actual Skyport itself. But it basically allows me to uh, basically switch on whoops, the different kind of groups to either just say fire the main light or fire the uh, side light or whatever it would be and things really. Okay, so tether tools is number one and basically um, as far as a trigger to fire your flashes is number two as far as the camera's concerned. 
I know um, often you're going to see a medium zoom lens being used, and if that's all you've got, then that's okay. Um, where possible, try and use the, uh, the length of the lens, so the 105 or the 70 or the 100, whatever you can, the longest length of the lens for the portraiture. Then for the more editorial images, you can zoom back a bit to the 50 if that's what you want to use. I try and stay with prime lenses myself, but that's just uh, an old fashioned thing, I suppose. And I like the quality of the glass compared to the zoom glass with it. But uh, again, nothing wrong with a good 24 to 105 if that's all you've got at hand. So the most essential elements um, really are the kind of the backgrounds as well. And the one thing I would try and ensure that you've uh, set yourself up for is not only a dark background, but also a facility, whether it's in the form of the likes of a pop-up background or whatever, or whatever it is, but I would have some method to be a able to get to a white wall as soon as pos possible. So just being able to remove the frame dark background there reveals obviously the white, uh, the white wall. You don't need anything as elaborate as I've, as I've got as far as the framework is concerned. But if you are gonna have a white, white wall here, have the ability to drop a background down of paper uh, is absolutely key then for kind of variety. Um, so paper backgrounds are a really great invest, investment but trying to choose which colors. I would always go for a gray no matter what, and then basically choose a kind of a, a vibrant red. And something like this teal is still in fashion, but you'd usually need to actually invest into a blue as well, of course. But uh, yeah, the most essential elements really are, are, what, are what we just covered there. And good luck with your headshot photography.